Hey everybody, regional championship week. We've got some great content on the show today. A special guest, a sleeper on the show. We're showing some love to some lower division schools, guys balling out. I'm AP. I'm LP. And this is episode 11 of the show LA. We're gonna hop right into some highlights. All right, here it is, Lindsay. Top plays of the year. We caught some action this year. Thanks and for right here, you. who was this? Uh, this was big time. Yeah, this is CJ Stroud, Silas Bolden. It's like one two connection that went on all year. They, they yeah, from Rancho. knocked people out. And then what I liked about this play right here here's DJ. He shows his mobility with the ankle breaker. Watch. <laughs> Dropped him. I yeah. mean, come on. A guy that big that could do that? He's going to on his feet. Another DJ highlight coming up here. This one, uh, this is before it got dark. Pump <laughs> fake? Daylight saving. And two I love Bo shooting Collins. games at this time yeah. of the year, by the way. Bo Collins in the end zone. Um, I mean, DJ had a lot of weapons And year. he hits him with the, the Terrell <laughs> Owens. I like that. And now here we have Jamison Wong. Um, right here just drops an absolute dime against Sierra Canyon and this is actually Sierra Canyon's only loss of the season. Wild. And they are, they actually took down Helix last night so they're going to state. Which is they're, crazy. they're state yeah, bound. To them. Um, now we have a big time play here. Jay Sarah traveled out to Utah and watched the hustle play. 21. You think you had a touchdown homie? You were starting to whoop, and strips nope. it. <laughs> Goes out of the back of the end zone, and that's a safety. And the lesson here, never give up on a play, ever. Uh, not till you're clear in that end zone. CJ Stroud again to who? Silas Bolden. <laughs> but no. Oh, wait, no. Oh, yeah, I almost oh, forgot no. about this. Oh, this no, was no. one of the picks of the year yeah. right here because so he, he snatched it. it and then hold on, here we go, Flo. The helicopter slam. Did, yeah. What did you think about that play when you first saw it? I felt bad for the guy going down. Like, <laughs> I like how Jay hey, slaps the ground after one of Justin Flo's many, many epic plays. And if you guys haven't seen the video on YouTube, La Habra versus Upland has 800,000 views, um, probably because of that play right there. Wild. Now we got Notre Dame Sherman Oaks um, just putting putting the business on at, down at the Honorable, actually. Um, this was a battle that Notre Dame actually won on a last second field goal. Crazy, that was, no, that was just clear running right there. Chris Hudson. Chris Hudson, our play, showstopper, showstopper of the year, year co-showstopper of the year. I mean, there's so many reasons. Just gallops into the end zone. <laughs> yeah. Now here we got Miller Moss to DJ Justice, who, DJ Justice, you guys, we've been pumping this dude up since 7 on 7 season. Didn't he just get just got offered. an offer. Yeah, yeah, he got an offer. Yeah, yeah. The SEC woke up and they offered my man DJ Justice. He's the truth. Um, his dad, a former Atlanta Braves baseball player, David Justice. Now here we've got um, some more Bosco highlights, Bosco, yeah. and I believe right here this is this is the man who had the interception against Modern Day, um, Jake Newman. Yeah, he I, I, he's a guy I feel like that really showed up towards the end of the season, but and here here comes Bosco. another um, DJ pass to Logan Loya. I mean that was committed to UCLA. Logan Loya, he was the player so of the game last week. Um, here we go, Jaden Casey. Look at this Johnny Wilson catch. The dude's six six. Back to the end zone. Paul Season Bowl All-Star, um, he's actually committed to Oregon. And we've got Upland right here. I always like the dive to the, the corner of the yeah. pylon. Use Arms the whole extended. field. Yeah. Ooh, Court Williams. He was up for our Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, um, he had a few good plays. He mashed that guy. And Pinkney, Pinkney Fifth from Sarah. Caught. <laughs> that was a sick interception against Long Beach Poly. Um, and then we've got Doug Brumfield here with a touchdown pass um, actually to to uh, LeVon Bunkley Shelton, another Polynesian Bowl All-Star. That was a great. Jalen Smith from yeah. Alamany, from Coach Snoop. Um, he stepped up this year, got a USC offer this year, a ton of big offers. And then we got Miller Moss again to Light whoop, machine. 90 uh, one yard touchdown pass against, the house. against Oaks. Miller Moss is the man, um, Alamany kind of you know, had some injuries and, and, and had a tough end of the season. What is the senator? The senator. The senator. And Lucas <laughs> Lin off to Chad Johnson Jr. Look at Chad. Hey, Chad has hops. I didn't realize Chad could get he up got like air, that. Yeah. Now, a fake punt. Justin Flo uh, doesn't get the ball in his hands that often, but when he does, they don't want to tackle him. Like right here, no, just he like has a rushing out. touchdown like, against yeah. Oso. He kind of anybody who can walk backwards into the end zone amongst a crowd of players. Everyone's just like, just let him go. Just no, let him go. handle it. I remember one year I watched Ron Dane from Wisconsin do that to the San Jose State uh, DBs. Now here we have uh, Garcia, Jake Garcia, USC commit. Um, he was at Narbonne last year, but Jake Garcia right here against um, Sarah. And 
couple of touchdown passes right here. The wheels on, man. Straight into the end zone. And uh, yeah, it's a long celebration. Um, and again, here we have Garcia. Another long touchdown pass against Sarah. <laughs> that really was a dime. You can see why this guy's committed to SC. Isaiah Young with the long kick return right there for a touchdown. Um, throwing the Centennial against Polly. And, and Darnell's happy about all these Corona Centennial. You know he is, and then Nick Floyd up the gut once, and then Nick Floyd, whoop, whoop. Um, he's got nothing but daylight in front of him, and he's one of their Centennial best smash him. A guy I like a lot, Dyson McCutcheon from Bishop Amont. Bishop he's only Mott. a junior. This dude is dynamic. He took the kick to the house here against Cathedral. Um, when he gets the ball in his hands, it, he, he's, he could go to the house potentially every single time. Dyson McCutcheon, you guys, watch out for him. His recruiting is definitely going to skyrocket. Um, big time player right here. Damian Moore? Damian Moore. I mean, look at this Mission guy. Mission League MVP. You yeah, see, this guy's a... You should, if you're this big, you shouldn't be this shifty, right? He's built like a college player now. Like, he really, look at that spin dude. move. Yes. Are you oh. kidding me? Damian Moore is cold-blooded. I, I mean, he's one of my favorite backs um, in the nation Cal this year. Commit. Yeah, Berkeley commit. They were actually his first offer. Um, he's so fun to watch. He ran for over 200 yards this game against Cathedral. Um, he got tackled by the uh, turf monster right there, but um, big time player right here. Boom, Floyd Chalk. Yeah. Only a sophomore. Long runs all the time. He, is, <laughs> he, he really did his dirt this year. This was against Downey. Um, Alamany, again, great season. They've got a, a lot of young talent, yeah. and Floyd Chalk is leading yes. the way. We got young Lucas Lenhoff right here. Cathedral. Yeah, and let's see, uh, young Lucas drops back and um, he drops a dime, dime. for six. Yeah. This was their opening possession against Amat, um, and you know Lucas came through with a with a solid touchdown pass to start that game, and then the senator Miller Moss, another touchdown. He, he makes it look too easy yeah, sometimes, he's right? Got, yeah, he's got a great arm. The Alamany offense was dialed up this year. Um, Defense, What's you know, crazy they, is they have a lot like their defense is really young, too. They're young. Um, really Oklahoma young. State quarterback commit. We got big Shane Illingworth. Shane Illingworth, yeah, he's a big guy with the dime. I mean, you can't really put that in a better spot. I would say the quarterbacks this year in Southern California have been de like deadly accurate. I yeah. mean, a lot of a lot of great passes, except that Bosco Modern Day came last week. Their quarterbacks were thrown behind the receivers all yeah. game. But um, here's another young quarterback who's who's a beast, AJ Duffy. Um, AJ Duffy right here hits the under recruited, the unheralded number eight, Jonah Carnell, who was actually uh, Miller Moss featured Jonah Carnell on the I Need yeah, Love. Yeah, I Need Love segment. He was one of the guys that he felt. That, that was one of the catches of the year. Some attention, yeah. Um, he, he plays for um, Premium um, in the offseason in the seven on seven, Jonah Carnell. And here we have another dime from AJ Duffy. AJ Duffy picked up a Miami offer as a freshman. Um, but this guy dropped it in the bucket right there. That's crazy, yeah. Um, and basically untouched from my point on. And so. this was one of the games of the year, right? Rancho Verde um, against Norco. Big time game right here. Now here's the man. This is Mission Viejo Upland. Uh, I think this is where Justin broke his helmet. Helmet, he broke his helmet, yeah. he broke his face mask, he chin strap, yeah. he broke something. He so had to leave for a play. Yeah, that was quite the game. Um, now you have Noah Fafita with a touchdown pass right here. Sophomore quarterback Noah Fafita from Servite. He's up and coming. Um, look, look out for this guy. His stock is definitely rising. Um, another dime here, um, just fit it in a window. Uh, we've had a ton of great plays this season. Yeah. I mean, it, and here comes another some, one right here. This, yeah, oh, this is, oh, this is the Amat Alamein. This was a fun game, too. This one went down to the wire. It did, and um, <laughs> here's big, big Damian Moore with a touchdown run, and you see how he just gets in and out. Um, this game was crucial. It came down to a big-time uh, two-point conversion. Yeah. Um, it was, this was like went down to the last play of the game. It was like a big stop on. So there was yeah. a huge touchdown. Tobin Odell threw. Um, and then Damian Moore ran in this two-point conversion. Amat went for two to take the lead. 
and uh, they got that it. They got to stop, and that was that. And was here's it. the it's a little out of order, but here's the Tobin Odell, Odell touchdown pass that actually brought them in position. Yeah. Um, to actually get that two point conversion, which was a crazy. Um, like in baseball, tie goes to the runner, tie goes to the receiver right there on the catch. Uh, Elite 11 MVP right here. We got my man CJ Stroud. It's effortless, right? He's on a, he was on a visit to Michigan this weekend, if y'all were And he just got an SC offer. Yeah, I saw so that. So yeah, SC, SC, you're late to the, SC, you're late to the party. Yes. Let's just be honest. Yeah. SC, you're very late to the party on CJ Stroud. Uh, Flea Flicker, watch the oh. diving catch. Crazy. That was nice. Silas Bolden, Oregon State. Um, Following in the footsteps of his yep. brother. F uh, former San Francisco 49er. He was in the league for a minute. Victor Bolden. I feel like one of the reasons he did so well this year is because he said he had a bet with Victor told me he had a bet with Silas to see who would have the better senior season. So a little fuel to the fire there. You have to. You have to. It's <laughs> you know, brotherly competition. Yeah, yeah. And, he and then Silas Bolden to the house on the kick return. This guy made plays all year long. That was a tie game before that kickoff return touchdown and Silas um, busted it out. Here's Bryce. Bryce Young. And does he truck somebody on this play? Ooh, ankle breaker and a... Yeah, he just breaks people. Oh, wow. There. <laughs> oh, wow. 22. I mean... He is a human highlight reel, so <laughs> this is one of many. Bryce gave him the business. He kind of sideways gave it to him, but he gave it to him. And then here it is, Bryce to Cody Epps. Cody Epps. I his favorite target. Um, Justin Flo with the pick here. And when he turns into an offensive player, you really don't want to try to touch him because one stiff, he knock you down. Yeah, uh, same guy gets right back up you. and catches another one. <laughs> Admire <laughs> the fight. <laughs> hey, we call that a two-piece with, with a biscuit. Um, Tyvin Ford, he trucked 800 people on this touchdown yeah. run. He he was actually a really, really great running back for Upland. He was fun to watch, too. So For sure. Jaden Casey now um, chucks one up to Jermaine Burton. This is one of the catches of the year. You got mossed. You definitely, <laughs> you definitely got mossed. Um, was, Jermaine Burton, LSU commit. Yeah, no, he was, uh, that was actually one of my probably favorite catches of the Jayden year. Jaden Casey um, <laughs> headed up to Cal too with Damian Moore. Looking like the, you know, the next coming of um, Aaron Rodgers. And it drops it in to Larry Turner right here. Um, that was a great pass too. And I always go for number threes. I rock number three coming oh, up. So, so you're, you're it, biased. <laughs> you know, three gang. And Larry Turner, youngster, only a sophomore. Um, that guy's going to explode. Now we've got Olu against Jay Sarah, and this is one of the plays of the year on the pick. Pick Watch in. Watch the stiff arm. Oh, my God. Boom. <laughs> Hollow be thy name. Hey, he really <laughs> blessed He really blessed him right there. Um, he got communion afterwards, too. He took a sip of the wine. Um, you can have, you know, underage. You go into church, you get the wine, right? Um, just a sip. Just a sip. That's it. That's it. Um, now who do we got here? We got Oaks Christian again, and... Um, Straight up the gut for six. Um, Oaks Christian's got a lot of young, um, unheralded players. Look for their program to, to get back on the up and up. They lost a lot of a lot of firepower when they lost um, Kayvon Thibodeau and some other seniors from last year, Josh Calvert. But Oaks should step it up. And Bryce Young, he Bryce just Young. throws a missile here. This is to Kyron Ware, right? Kyron Ware Hudson, if you yeah. catch it right here on your fingertips and you keep running, it's literally, it's a perfect pass. Like, I would give that pass a, a 110 out of 100. Bryce Young dropped that on the money. You can take, like, a highlight from Bryce every game, multiple highlights. You really can. Yeah. And, I mean, this is, you know, Bryce in modern day against Jay Sarah, and here he is to Cody Epps. Cody Epps. Um, you got to do a better job than that. He spun the DB around. And I mean, got Cody Epps honestly it impressed everyone this year, broke every modern day receiving record. I'm on Raw. Yeah. How many receivers? Brew McCoy. You had a ton of people come yeah. through that program. So, I mean, that's another guy, too. Recruiting is definitely going to pick up with him. He's, yeah, hometown kid. Modern day, man. Um, they didn't expect to exit that early this year. Um, as in, <laughs> as in, you know, the as game before the wish, state championship. They, yeah, exactly. They wish they were playing next weekend. But amazing offensive line. Uh, Miles Morale right here opens up a gaping hole um, for Yetz. And Miles Morale, Polynesian Bowl All-Star, um, big time contributor for modern day this year and a big time reason why. Bryce had, you know, 800 years in the pocket. Uh, Ty Marks, another offensive lineman over there. And then the pick six against Jay Sarah. Modern Day just did it on all sides. Yeah. I don't know if Coach Rollinson was happy about him holding the ball in one hand. 
So you cool. think he heard about he that in lot. film? Oh, I, I guarantee he heard yeah. about it in film. He was good, though. Was um, and the Utah game last night, did you see the guy drop the ball before he got in the end zone? I did, I did, and I was like, mm, that's no touchdown. Poor form, poor form. That was a there. Deshaun Jackson esque. Um, he did that several yeah. years ago with Philly, right? I, yeah, I remember that too. Ooh. Now, uh, big time highlight here we've got uh, Grace against La Habra, Clark Phillips, Ohio State DB commit. Whoop! Um, he chunks the deuce right here, which is one of my, the dopest things I think I've seen all season. If you're running a kick return to the house and you chunk the deuce, um, you're cold. I mean, no matter what, it, I mean, you're going to Ohio State or not, you chunk the deuce on a kick return touchdown. I got mad love. Um, this is one of the plays of the year right here. Josh Henderson. Oh my gosh. Play that back. <laughs> Josh Henderson uh, rocket launch catapulted Clark Phillips and momentum or not, it was a sick play. That's sick, yeah. Um, Josh Henderson, coach's son, man, you know everybody was going crazy on that sideline. Uh, really great play. Grace ended up losing to Corona Del Mar in, in, the, in the championship. Yeah. But right, yeah. Great team. Um, they've got some great players, Julian Stokes. Um, now here's Carter Freeland. Um, this is against Bosco. Bosco, yeah. <laughs> and this is one of the catches of the year to Gary Bryant. You guys got to watch this. Yeah, this was sick. <sighs> Carter Freeland was probably my favorite out of the three QB rotation for Corona Centennial. I would have loved to see, I mean, Corona Centennial is going to run it up with the running game no matter what. I would love to see Corona Centennial go away from the multi-quarterback system and let, let somebody get some shine because Carter Freeland could have been yeah, that guy. Yeah, I feel like he could have too. Um, and DJ Justice DJ again. DJ Justice from Alamany. He made plays all year, so the SEC offer um, is not a surprise to me. It might be some, a surprise to the recruiting side who had him rated as a three-star. Um, so this was the only touchdown against No, no, us. this set oh, up no, the touchdown. Oh, this set up the touchdown. You're right, you're right. Right, so, so that first was the possession one yard, of the game. Yeah, one yard line there. And then Johnny's too big. Yeah, Cal I mean, that was the only touchdown that Cal Best Johnny played with some fire this game, um, and it was a great game. Those are some of our plays of the year. Um, we've got a ton more on our YouTube channel. Yeah, there's too many. <laughs> YouTube.com slash sports recruits. Sports recruits on YouTube. Same as our Twitter, I mean, same as our Instagram, but check us out on Twitter at football recruit. Lindsay, what's your at? Um, at Lindsay Lares. Um, these were honestly some of my favorites, but a ton more, so go check them out. All right, and s state bowl games this week. Um, we've got state championships, uh, regional championships tonight, state bowl games, excuse me, next week. But this is the show LA, episode 11, and those were our highlights of the year. As always, we want to give a shout out to our team partner, Zort Sports. Zort Sports is an absolutely free tournament scheduling app um, and league scheduling app. You can actually download it on iPhone or Android. I'm an Android guy myself, man. They always make fun of me, but check it out. Zort Sports on iPhone or Android. Absolutely free, easy to use. Check it out. guys hey our player spotlight today is Dane Brenton out of Marina High School junior wide receiver and DB and you are coming off a pretty big win over Muir and you helped lead your team to their first CIF Southern Section title so let's just talk about the roller coaster of the last week um, you know it's been pretty tough uh, good competition you know they're one of the better teams and we just had to prepare ourselves as best as we could for this week and uh, we did a good job. Did you guys really take time to celebrate that win before <laughs> moving on to um, game planning for tonight's game? We Not really. It all kind of took a while to sink in, you know. Just CIF champions are just amazing. So we all just were kind of amazed by it. And you popped off during that game. You had two interceptions and a touchdown. Just kind of what worked that game for you? Um, I kind of just eyed the ball because I knew like they had athletes on their team. They, they like to throw deep a lot. So I just looked for the ball as much as I could and uh, just made plays. And you've, in general, just had a great season and it's your first season at Marina. Yeah. So what was it, 13 touchdowns and five picks. So yeah. what is it um, about this program that's really allowed you to thrive? Uh, we have great coaches, great teammates. Uh, everyone helps each other out, you know, it's just great. It's a great uh, environment. What went into the decision into transferring from Edison where you were previously? I didn't live by Edison okay. at first, so it was kind of hard getting there back and forth and just didn't end up working out. From start of the football season to now, just how have you grown as a player in the um, season? I've definitely grown uh, from football. Like I've definitely gotten better. Everyone's been pushing each other. And I feel like 
I became a better person uh, at Marina because everyone just brings each other up and it's like a family. Especially after that last, you know, during the season, but especially after last game, has recruitment kind of picked up for you a little bit? Um, not too much. I mean, a little bit. Like, I'm, after I got put on the sports recruits, I started getting a little bit more out there, but still working on it. Um, you play both sides of the ball, and we were kind of talking about this a little bit, but, you know, ideally, what's your favorite side to play on? I like to play offense more. Why is that? I just, I like touchdowns. So if you had to give me an elevator pitch, um, you know, a Division One coach looking for an athlete, you know, how would you market yourself? Um, Hardworking. Uh, I pay attention to the classroom, try, try to get the best here as I can. And uh, I'm respectful, always listening, and just love football. For a guy that's, you know, looking to get some attention from college coaches, how much emphasis do you put on the work you do in the classroom to really make yourself the best candidate to play at the next level? I give it everything I have, you know. It's just like you only have one shot, so you might as well just do the best you can. And do you feel like people give the class, you know, athletes give, you know, enough attention to that classroom part? Because obviously it's important for you. Um, I feel like they do. Like, if people are all out here getting all these offers, like, they got to have good grades, you know. So I feel like they do a decent job. Um, so just talk about tonight's game against Lafoyek. How are is your team kind of managing the emotions, you know, headed up? We're hours away at this point yeah, from game time. Um, we want to win, you know, uh, it's our regional game. If we win this, we go to state. And our, our coach showed us a state ring for like winning, and it's just huge. And everyone, everyone got pretty hyped about that. So we're hoping to win and uh, keep going. Do you guys have kind of a rallying cry, or have you developed a motto for the season that you guys kind of have? Um, not necessarily. We just kind of just go with the flow. What's this last week been like game planning? Do you feel like everyone's just excited or they're nervous feelings at all? I think we're confident this week. We feel like we're going to get it done. So you mentioned that you did get some traction once we posted you and a lot of top recruits are signing off on you've got skills. So just talk about what it's like coming from a smaller division and trying to get those looks and you know just that validation from everybody else playing. Yeah so I'm just honestly I'm just doing the best that I can just doing everything I can every game just trying to get myself out there like it doesn't matter what division like I was I would be in I would still do everything I could to succeed and like be the best that I could so it's different but just doing everything I can and hoping it goes well. Do you feel for the players in smaller divisions that you do have to put extra effort to be seen? Um, yeah, I kind of do because like D11, like you don't know if there's going to be that many looks because it's D11, but you know, if, if you're good and like people notice you, like you're going to get looked at and that's just what I'm hoping for. Um, as you go through this recruitment process, are you putting any special emphasis on social media and just even how you market yourself on those platforms? Um, yeah, I'm trying to do that a little bit, but I'm still, I'm still new to it, so we're working on it. Okay, no, no, effort in progress. Um, and kind of what changes, I guess, are you making to your social media approach now that um, you've kind of noticed yeah. that there's, there is some power in that? I'm going to help. I just, I've, I have like some recruiting accounts and all that, and like I'm just trying to put myself out there more, you know, get myself in front of coaches. What are your plans for the off season? Um, are you playing in, you know, any seven on seven? Yeah, I'm going to play seven on seven for OC Elite. Cool. Um, and just, I mean, Cornwall went into the decision for playing with them, and what are you hoping to get out of it? Um, I've known him since my eighth grade year. He let me join a battle tournament, and from there, that was like the main start of my football career because that like got me interested and like it was fun. And uh, he's just a great coach, and he said he's gonna help me out with offers, and he's gotten a lot of kid offers, so I trust him. Cool. I'm um, headed into your senior year. You know, what's the big overall goal for yourself, just in terms of development? I'm trying to get uh, bigger and faster, mostly, and then just hope everything else just falls into place. Do you have a dream school, dream offer? Um, not necessarily. Like, I'd like to stay on the West Coast, you know, but honestly, I'd take any of them. Okay, so talk us through your two interceptions against Mir. Um, and you mentioned you're a multi-sport athlete, so I'm pretty sure some of that had a, that smooth backpedal had yeah. something to do with the soccer skills. <laughs> um, yeah, the first one, I, I knew he was going to throw it deep. I saw him looking for his favorite receiver, and I just started backpedaling. And I, as soon as I saw him release the throw, I knew he was going deep. So just flipped my hips and rolled with it, and then uh, high point it, and it felt good. <laughs> and that second one? Um, second one, honestly, that one was a little harder to catch because like it was over the shoulder like this yeah and uh, I was just hoping for it and I, and I saw him and I'm like no way he's throwing it again so he threw it again I'm just running down the sideline I just went over the shoulder like this and it's perfectly ended up my hand and then uh, <laughs> that was just 
Yeah, so I, I caught it, I turned around, I saw one guy that was kind of by me and I kind of gave like a little stiff arm, got, got away from him and then I just saw open field and it just turned up right away. What's the comparison of the feeling between catching a touchdown pass or an INT? Like, what, what's, the, what's the first the first thought that pops in your head when you feel the ball in your hand? Um, the touchdown is just like, uh, like you're just excited, like, yeah, I just scored. But with the interception, you're like, I can move in the ball. You know, like, I have a lot of field in front of me to do stuff. And that, that's fun, too. But, uh... I don't know, I just touch on a little bit more exciting. Can't beat that feeling. Dane, you got the flow going, you play in Huntington Beach. You don't necessarily look like a football player yeah. in terms of the look you got going. So in terms of what people expect to see from see from you on the field and then after the game, where does the respect level go? In what direction? I'm pretty sure trending higher. Yeah, <laughs> definitely when I'm on the field, I feel like I get mixed looks, you know, like long hair. But uh, I think I'm pretty dripped out when I'm on the field sometimes, but <laughs> Uh, yeah, but once I start to play and they start to get a look at me, then I feel, definitely feel like they're going to respect me more. Like, off the field or after the game, like, you know, a lot of people will come up to me and coaches and be like, you're a great player, like, good good game and all that. And I'm like, thank you. What's and, uh, the craziest, like, smack someone's tag to you while on the field? Um, Have they commented on the flow? <laughs> no? They haven't. Uh, on the last post, though, they were talking about how uh, they, uh, threw, they, they said that they made me look good because, like, they threw me the ball, but I was like, it's whatever. And tell me about the flow. How long have you been growing it out? Um, I've been growing it out. <laughs> I actually amazing. just got it cut. It was a lot. It was like it was a lot longer before, but I got it cut a little bit. I'm thinking about cutting it again, but I don't know. I just always like long hair. Hey guys, so we are previewing the big game, uh, Open Division State Bowl Championship. Uh, it's going to be between St. John Bosco and De La Salle. The last time these two teams met was in 2016 up in Sacramento. Score for that game was 56 to 33. Bosco ran away with Bosco it. Bosco actually dominated that game up in Sac Town. Um, the, the 56 to 33 score made it seem a lot closer than it was. De La Salle only had 12 first downs that entire game. Bosco had 28. Time of possession was also like About Bosco 33 30, yeah, minutes like to 20. 30, yeah, something like that. Bosco really ran away from it. Um, they really proved that, you know, the SoCal teams in the open division, you know, just come much larger and much more athletic yeah. these days than up <laughs> north. And the truth of the matter is with De La Salle in that game, with the lack of a passing game, once you get down by a couple of scores, um, it's pretty much a wrap. And I mean, that's kind of the, the what we're dealing with this year. De La Salle, heavy, heavy run team. Almost 3,000 yards rushing. Exactly, yeah. They've got and five players with over 300 yards rushing and then led by Shamar Garrett, the senior San Jose State commit. On the Bosco side, we have three wide receivers. It's uh, Logan, Loya, Bo Collins. And Hudson. And Hudson with all over 900 yards receiving. So again, we're kind of going to see that pretty similar dynamic from 2016. Yeah, and where De La Salle does have the matchup is rushing touchdowns. Um, De La Salle has 41 rushing touchdowns on the season. Bosco only has 25, but if you flip it to the passing game, Bosco has 45 passing touchdowns on the year, while De La Salle only has 14. 14 yeah. And a few of those De La Salle touchdown passes came from Shamar Garrett, likely out of the Wildcat. Wildcat so, yeah. So, um, some heavy run team on one side, a little more balance on the Bosco side. Yeah, so we'll just see um, what the matchup entails but Bosco beat Modern Day last week, yeah. the number one, or a few <laughs> weeks ago, the number one team in the nation. Um, so I think it's, De La Salle has its work cut out. Yeah, Definitely. I mean, if, if you ask me for a prediction, I think Bosco's gonna take it again. Um, I just, if they play, if they put in the effort that they put in against I know Day, Bosco yeah. football, I know Coach <laughs> Negro. Um, they're going to keep their foot on the gas. Mm -hmm. So if Bosco goes up, do not expect them to stop or to withhold yeah, any once they firepower. Yeah, they get in their rhythm, like, there's no stopping DJ Uyunglele's last high school game of his career, I, I expect the Clemson commit to go stupid and, and really just spread the ball around to a lot of people. But look out for Adam Oweda, who had a big game last week yeah. against Modern Day. Um, he's he's a threat. He's a he's a big potential threat in their Number system 16, now. Yeah, and he frees up some of those wide receivers. Exactly. Yeah, definitely a guy to keep watching. Again, I feel like he really stepped it up on that back end of the season, but he's fun to watch. And uh, you know, some sleepers on the Bosco side, Josh Alford. We've talked yeah. about him. He's had a couple of interceptions here in the playoffs. He's been playing really well. And then um, you Nate know, Burrell. Nate Burrell, right? Yeah, that he's a guy that definitely has had. A, he turned it on at the right time. Yeah, he had some nice sacks. So. <laughs> uh, and then again, Shamar Garrett, 
um, San Jose State commit on De La Salle. He's a super dynamic athlete. I personally had the chance to watch this guy in seven on seven, and he, he'll break your ankles. Um, if, so if you get Shamar Garrett in the open field, he's dangerous. But if De La Salle can control the time of possession and keep the ball out of Bosco's hands, that's the only way I see this you know, being somewhat of a yeah. close game potentially. So potentially. do you have a prediction? Prediction, score prediction. Um, I think that Bosco is going to put up 60. Wow. Okay. I mean, I think they'll, yeah. I mean, that'll. Weather permitting. What Weather permitting. Yeah, that's true. If it's rainy, that also will affect the pass game. So, hey, I, I think Bosco takes it. I don't know if I can put a number on it. I feel Bosco like also has four, um, four runners with over 400 yards rushing this year. So or excuse me, ground. over 300 yards they rushing this year. They do have a ground year. game, and they might have to step it up again, depending and on And DJ the has stepped up. it up the last few weeks, so. If, if weather is a factor, look for DJ, the Clemson big quarterback commit to um, get to trucking a couple of people. Yeah. Okay. All right, and that's our preview. Um, De La Salle coming down to face St. John Bosco. The Sparks is with the Braves. Yeah. And uh, we'll catch up with you guys after that game. Hopefully we have DJ in the studio. Yeah, that's our hope. Uh, we'll have one more show after that and kind of recap all the state bowl games. So tune in. I need love. Hey, Dane Brown here. This is uh, the I Need Love segment. These are three players that I feel like need more spotlight. Number one is Farrell Rush, Marina High School. He's a senior, running back, very fast, very versatile. Great player on and off the field. He uh, great, great moves on the field, and uh, I feel like he deserves more recognition. The next player I feel like needs more recognition is definitely Nathan Aurora. He's still Marina High School. Um, he's leading the league in tackles. I think it's at 165. He's been working since freshman year. He's been on varsity all four years, and. Uh, Definitely a great player, hard hitter, and a special player. Right. Lastly, I think I need a little bit more recognition. I'm fast, run good routes, have good hands, play both sides of the ball, have great vision, great feet, and a good feel for the game. Yo, everybody, I'm back. It's AP. All I need is one take for this still balling segment, and we're going to show you guys three players who were balling in high school and are still balling at the next level. First up on our list, that dude who made everybody's offense shiver when he was in high school, Kayvon Thibodeau from Oaks Christian High School, led that Oregon defense last night to the Pac-12 championship against Utah. Two and a half sacks, I think it should have been three. Two and a half tackles for loss, but the true freshman wreaked havoc on that Utah offense. Kayvon Thibodeau, you were balling then, you're still balling now. Another guy who we covered from back in the day from Norco, Troy Dye, linebacker for Oregon, playing one-handed with the cast on, snatched a pick last night. He was pivotal in Oregon's win over Utah for the Pac-12 championship. The next dude who we covered back in the day, covered this guy at the opening, covered him a little bit on the seven on seven circuit, Ohio State quarterback, Justin Fields. He's still balling. The dude has 2,700 yards passing this year, 37 touchdowns and only one pick, and he's completing nearly 70% of his passes. Ohio State is ranked number one in the nation right now. Justin Fields, you're still balling. Thank you so much for joining us. This is our second to last show of the football season, which is absolutely crazy. I want to say a special thank you to Dane Breton of Marina High School for joining us for our player spot. On game day. On game day. He's playing in a few hours. So yeah, 6 p.m. We got La Jolla traveling up to play Marina in Westminster. Um, we'll have the mixtape crew on hand. Hopefully get some great highlights. But yeah, again, shout out to Dane Brenton. He's a sleeper, you guys. No offers, no major recruiting site profiles. He's got the skills, so you're gonna definitely hear more about him. And, and, and like he said, he, he, he's got a little bit of drip on the field too. But episode 11 is in the books. I'm AP. I'm LP. Peace.